What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today I have a topic that's going to probably get me a lot of hate, but I think it needs to be said because it seems like nobody else is willing to say it. It's time for Nintendo to kill the 3DS, and I mean that completely. Honestly, they've been pushing this too far already. Even as recently as October, the president of Nintendo said, yeah, we're going to keep coming out with tons of 3DS games, that thing isn't dead at all. Look. That's a great sentiment. I totally understand trying to support your hardware. There are over 36 million 3DSs that have been sold. That's a giant demographic. That's a huge audience that's willing to buy all your stuff, either digital or physical. Even this week, there was a new 3DS game released. It was a new RPG maker. That's really, really cool, and I'm glad you're supporting the audience. But let's face facts here. The Nintendo Switch is the future, and the Nintendo Switch is already selling insanely well. Nintendo's latest gadget is actually killing it so much that they're having to go out and buy almost entire factories to have enough hardware to keep producing it. Yes, I'm serious about that. Apple actually produces these screens that use some of the same hardware as the Nintendo Switch. So Nintendo's had to go in and sign all sorts of deals to make sure they had more microchips and all the pieces they'd need to keep making it, to keep up with this amazing demand. They've already sold over a million Nintendo Switches, which for such a short window, window is insanity. It shows that that is where you need to focus all your efforts. Nintendo, I know you're not going to want to hear this, and Nintendo fanboys are going to get real mad, but third-party support isn't coming on as fast as you guys would like. Every, almost everything that's coming out for the Nintendo Switch is still very, very first-party. There's uh, Zelda, of course. We have Mario Kart. These are really interesting. ARMS is absolutely killing it. It's already passed several hundred thousand copies, I think, which is just... Almost gives me a nosebleed because I don't like that game that much, even though I can tell everybody else is really enjoying it. But now, it's time to finally double down. If you want the Switch to be successful, you're going to be making every single game. Now, I know you don't like that thought. There are some cool indie games on there, like even this week I was playing Mighty Gunvolt Blast, I think, and that was really cool. But that's not the stuff that's going to be sitting on a shelf in a Target that's going to make people want to buy your system. You're going to have to do all the heavy lifting here. But if you're trying to divide up attention between the 3DS and the Switch, that's only going to be hurting yourself. So I think here's what you got to do. Number one... You're going to have to get rid of this. It's great. I understand that it's still selling really well, but you need to send a message not just to gamers, but to developers. Right now, it's incredibly tempting to just put out an easy game on the 3DS. 35 million units sold is a really impressive number. That means that whenever people are looking for a place to put their project, they're going to think, man, that 3DS is looking really sweet. You need to get rid of that island so they finally come to the mainland. People need to stop seeing that as a viable option. It's been over six years now since the 3DS came out. It's only been a couple months since the Switch came out, but the Switch is already selling such strong, strong fig figures. You need to bring over every single person you can. You've already won over the Nintendo fanboys. They're buying everything. They're getting stuff they, they don't even care about some of that stuff, but they're willing to buy it. They're willing to look past the $80 controllers for the Switch because they love the hardware so much, and they love the idea behind it. But that means that you need to double down it as well. Start coming out with more weird projects. Do something like a crazy horror game, but make it first party. Bring out everything you can. And here's what's really important. Start making stuff that looks like a 3DS game. Now, I don't mean that graphically, but start making stuff like a 2D Zelda. Make something that normally would be at home on a handheld, but exclusive to the Switch. Now, imagine if you made a Triforce Heroes sequel. Call it... Four Force Heroes. Now, I'm just making up that title, and I know that's cringy and bad, but imagine if you made a four-player co-op 2D Zelda exclusively for the Switch. That's the kind of stuff that you guys need really badly right now, and it'll send a really clear message not just to investors, not just to gamers, but to developers. And I feel like that's what you really need to do right now. You need third-party developers to support this system. You can't hold it up alone. 
The Nintendo Wii was a cool console, but let's face it, once everybody else stopped making games for it, you weren't able to just keep it alive by yourself. You need everybody's help. Keeping a system thriving is going to be a team effort. I'm just afraid of the fact that the Nintendo Switch is going to be six months or a year in, and everybody's going to start looking at the library and go, Yoshi, Kirby, Zelda, Mario. Where's all the diversity? Where's all the outside weird stuff? Where's like a Silent Hill style horror game? Where's going to be some sort of cool puzzle game like Jack Party Box? These are all interesting ideas that Sony and Microsoft are willing to experiment on. They're willing to go to signier studios and fund the development of projects that are a little bit more out there just to make sure that everything coming out for their system gets you thinking, gets you talking, gets you interested. I'm just really afraid that by trying to keep both of these things going on simultaneously, which clearly you're doing, you're going to be watering down your own gene pool. Even this month, we're getting an all new 3DS. It's going to be called the 2DS XL. That seems insanity to me. You need to drop this. I understand that it's paying your bills a little bit still. This is the main argument that I've seen on Twitter from people who are huge diehard supporters of Nintendo. They say, why would they kill this? Keep printing them as fast as they can. As long as people are buying the 3DS, support the 3DS. People in Japan are still riding the trains every single day with millions of 3DSs in their hands. Why would you purposely tell them to stop playing if it's paying your bills? I'm just afraid of the fact that if you keep looking to the past, you're never going to get a chance to see how glorious the future could be. Nintendo, you're normally a pretty forward-facing company. You're willing to invent what no one else is thinking about. But right now, I think you've already done it. You've struck gold with the 3DS. You've struck even better gold with the Switch. It's time to say goodbye to the past. Do what you need to do, or else it's going to be too late before you can course correct. In a weird way, I'm sort of reminded of the Atari 2600. Now, this system was very heavily supported. Everybody was jumping on board. This was one of the first systems that was easily accessible and it was in everybody's home. But here's a weird thing. You don't know this, a lot of people don't know this, but there were a lot of sequels to the Atari. There was a 5200 and there was a 7200. They sold really, really badly. So what's really odd is that since Atari was still supporting this console and still letting people put out games for this console, that's all you saw. You saw hundreds and hundreds of Atari 2600 games, but there was almost nothing on the other systems because Atari allowed it. They just let anybody put out any game for any system. So instead of trying to look towards the future and plan for better graphics, better controls, and better options, they were looking towards the biggest sales pool. Well, if I can put out Pong on a system that has 50 million units, of course I'm going to do it. Why would I go for the new system that only has a million units sold? You need to force people to see the future. You need people to know that if they want to keep developing for your console, then that's going to be with the Switch. And also, this is just a side note, start letting people develop for your console. Now, I think it's crazy. It's still really, really difficult to get a Switch development kit. Why would you do this? Honestly, if someone's coming to you and they have a good track record of making great stuff, let them do it. Now, this is a total shot in the dark example, but I've been playing a lot of Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy this week. If that studio somehow came to you and said, hey, we have permission to put Crash on any system, can we make it on the Switch? You should give them a development kit. You should give them like five development kits just to make sure they can get it done as quickly and perfectly as possible. But Nintendo is being really secretive about who's allowed to make games and who's not. You need to loosen the noose on your own neck or you're going to strangle yourself. Open up the floodgates on the Switch. Direct all these new developers. Direct all these new ideas. Direct all this passion to the device that everybody is so interested in. Well, this is just my thoughts on it anyways. What do you think? Do you think it's time for Nintendo to finally kill the 3DS or can these two devices live as a happy family? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Did I say subscribe? 
I don't know. I did this outro like five times and I keep screwing up. Seriously, thank you for watching and, uh, and everything else. These are super fun to make. Now, I'm going to go play my 3DS and my Switch because I, I think they're awesome. I just think that uh, one of these is a little bit better. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.